Male, white, Caucasian type, obese, or you might say fat, that's okay. Uh, glasses, and definitely English, not his first language. At least for the last part, you're going to get proof in the next minute. That's actually about the amount of information I'm willing to share with the broader public. I have a background in computer programming, in building computers, actually from a time where the dinosaurs just disappeared and computers were, yeah, some kind of invented and programming was done with a screwdriver for some time. Um, of course, being an IT security uh, expert for several branches of the Austrian government. Of course, this formed somehow my opinion about a lot of things that we're going to hear about today. And I'm not here because I'm more clever than anyone else in the room, or I'm not here to say that I know things so much better than you. I just give you my very personal view of why we should be very careful with what we do when we talk about computers, about privacy, and about sovereignty of our own data. So let me invite you to my very personal situation room. Um, by the way, when I tried to explain to my mother what I'm doing with my new baby, Fragmentics, she listened for a while and then she said, mm, oh, that sounds interesting, even though I don't understand a lot about it. But, but to be honest, um, I have nothing to hide, so. Um, let me ask you, who of you ever said loud to someone, I have nothing to hide? Raise your hands. Come on, be honest. Okay? So, for all of those raising your hands, would you please unlock your mobile, lay it here in front of the stage. Um, I'm going to just read out your quick dial list. I'm going to have a look at your family pictures, your private pictures. I'm going to read a little bit about the messages you sent to whom else here in the room. And uh, you don't need to be afraid. Uh, you don't need to have a sticker on the mobile. Uh, I'm going to give it back to you and be sure I'm going to find you. No problem on that. I start collecting reactions when it comes to I have nothing to hide. And if you can donate something on that, please let me know. I think it's not really surprising, especially when we hear about different IT breaches and all the IT security stuff in a lot of media around us, that the automated spying of our private or most private data, of our most private information, is actually systematically and automated. And it undermines the concept of privacy and property. And if every letter you type in your keyboard, in your computer's keyboard, is potentially stolen automatically and used against your own interests, how can it be possible that concepts of privacy or the protection of our intellectual property work? It's not possible. And so, sorry I have to be the bad guy today in terms of think creative and be innovative. Please go on doing it, but be very careful when it comes to typing things in your computer, and I'm going to try to explain to you why I think you have more than enough reasons to think about it twice. When it comes to digital sovereignty, a lot of people do not really have any ideas about what it might be to have sovereignty about their own data. But on the other side, what could possibly go wrong if just about every bad guy in the world 
knows some minor details of your life. Just your orientation, your opinions, your occupation maybe, or yeah, maybe he gets your fingerprint scan from a security database. He just can unlock your phone, your computer, and maybe your house. So what could possibly go wrong? Um, I'm gonna give you my maybe not so bright, optimistic view about the attacks that we're gonna face. And of course, since I don't want us all to be victims of all the same game, I'm going to talk to you about how to defend and protect yourself. And finally, actually the idea behind this should be to learn and of course then also to teach maybe also your mother, your brother, your friends, how to protect yourself and switch into action mode, not to be or to stay the victim of all of that. So to go back to the attack image, there is an unavoidable and permanent situation of digital attacks around us. And it's not twice a day, it's not twice an hour. It's actually to be counted by the millisecond. It's not that one guy sitting somewhere in a dark room is focusing on you or on you. It's automatically and systemized kind of attacks. And to help us to understand this, uh, I have this very heavy slide from Black Ops uh, a US intelligence think tank. And I was assured that you even so, maybe you cannot memorize all the points, but you will get something to drink later on. Um, this asymmetrical hybrid warfare actually can be categorized into three categories. Of course, there is the totally non-militant kind of war, asymmetric hybrid warfare. It's about trade war, economic war, things like that. Then we have the second uh, type of warfare, uh, of hybrid warfare uh, things, which is the so-called transmilitary thing. That means it's somewhere in between the non-military and the military part. And here you've got all the things like espionage, you've got all the things including cyber warfare that we are going to talk about in more detail. And of course, sure, there still is the, I don't want to say good old-fashioned military warfare, but we have all enough fantasy to understand what that means. The point I want to uh, focus on is actually that this kind of cyber warfare functions as the accelerator to a lot of the other ways of doing bad things to good people. So who actually are our enemies in the cyberspace? Of course, there can be the individual guy, the script kid trying out to have a virus and try to find out if the virus can spread only around his university or maybe around the globe, who knows. Of course, those script kids can then, and we all receive enough emails that someone wants to give you some 25 million US. Um, yeah, th they can also work in gangs. Then we have, which is maybe the most worrisome part of that, the very resourceful and transnational organized crime organizations that really, they didn't stop doing in drugs and other things, but now they're also very heavily focused on cyber warfare against people with enough money, like in our countries. And of course, as some of you might have heard, um, there are those state sponsored, highly financed, highly trained uh, entities, hacking groups that do not act as a military compound or as a military organization, but nevertheless, they support the political ideas of just about all the countries who have these kind of sponsored hacking groups. And yes, some people call the information harvesting companies social networks. And of course, um, 
Intel's is just a short form for the intelligence agencies of the world. These intelligence agencies actually, most of them, are bound to laws. But after 9-11, latest on that, um, most of them don't really care a lot about their legal constraints. So most of these organizations are now in a kind of global surveillance mode. And, and this is going to be important for us later, this global intel is already storing just about all the traffic in the internet for the time that will come when they will be able to read all the things we encrypted today. So, to speed up a little bit, I just want to give you some very quick thoughts about digital self-defense. And therefore, I ask you to please fasten your digital seatbelt with me. And please do it always, not just once a week. Daily updates for free. If you don't use it, of course, the opponents have a good chance to get your data. Backups, the easiest way to be sure that you don't lose your data. Use a password manager. It's not important that you remember all the passwords. One strong password and let the machine do the rest for you. Please do it. And yeah, you've got a router at home from your telecom provider. Use your own firewall behind this. Never ever for a second trust the router of your provider. And by the way, uh, did I say backups? Yeah, do it offline, at least weekly. And there are some totally free things that can be downloaded. Use the rescue systems on a stick and try to find all the viruses if the operating system is not on. And split your networks because of all the nice things that Internet of Things, the IoT devices, can bring to your network. Just as an example, my friend Alexandra Blanc wrote about automated smart ovens that simply heat themselves up. Stop connecting stuff to the internet, it will kill you. Connected means hacked. Cloud means leak. The trouble on these pages, it's true. To be fair to Internet of Things, my good friend James Ehrlich from Stanford actually uh, is working on region villages where food, energy, water, a lot of things to enable communities to live and work together help a lot. And of course, Internet of Things makes sense, but you have to be very careful what to do with this data. So I want to switch you to this action mode, as I told you. And yeah, actually my own experience, I was not always a fan of high security IT. And I really did not care too much about quantum computers until about four years ago. But when I learned what quantum computers will do to our cryptography of today, I was stunned. Maybe these next numbers will help you to understand why. What took longer than the universe exists will be cracked within 100 seconds. And so everything will change. So we need to make sure to be equipped to have a chance against this new technology, against this new threat of quantum computers. So there are a few technologies out there that can help us doing it. One of them is secret sharing. And I want to give you a quick example of what secret sharing can do you as your digital ABS for you. Let's say we want to protect our file. In this case, the image file of a happy Austrian cow. This file can be divided, in this simple case, into three fragments using algorithms from a cryptographer called Adi Shamir and others. And none of these fragments actually contains any useful data. And you can also define how many of these fragments you need to reassemble the document later. So a single fragment does not contain any useful information. And since 
it doesn't even allow any kind of conclusion what could be in the fragment. You have something which is really rare in today's IT, which is called informational theoretical security. So you can store each of these fragments or, and whatever storage location you want to store it. And you, as the one storing it, are the only one to know where you have stored your fragment. Our poor thief actually can only cry because he only gets a totally useless piece of junk. So demand from your platforms, your social networks, and from your government to protect your personal data, your privacy data, better against those cyber criminals out there and those knowledge thieves that actually attack all of us. And start using your digital seat belt with the firewalls, with the backup, with all the things, and use them always. And start today to demand a kind of digital ABS with secret sharing from your IT providers. Because if you don't care for your privacy, don't expect anyone else to do it. Thank you.